Good morning, guys. Welcome back to another video here from the off -Kit Garage. Meine Damen und Herren, herzlich willkommen. Um, this is actually Andy from the future now, because um, yesterday's video I have forgotten to say hello. So this is my hello from the future for the video from yesterday. Well, to be 100% honest, the video from yesterday, which you will see uh, just after this intro now, was supposed to come as part two behind the 110 ampere hour discharge test which we did with the Frankenstein battery. But while editing this video I found it was already 20 minutes long and then it would be like 40 minutes long with all my... So I decided to cut it short and you may have seen I looked a bit different in the outro actually of this video because this was like two days later. Anyway we had some rain this morning and it's nice and beautiful and cloudy. We have like um we've got almost 2.1 kilowatt. Look at this beautiful cloudy winter weather that's what we want enough with the sunshine enough with the talk let's go back to the video from yesterday three thousand six hundred watts guys i couldn't ask for better weather than this that is so perfect sun comes through reflection from the clouds and the um the uh, Corellas. No, they are not Corellas. Oh, there are more. How loud they are. Well, anyway, guys, this is now... Oh, there are more. Five more. Nice. I couldn't ask for any better weather. The battery was down to 7% this morning again, and now we are 3.9, 3.9 kilowatts. Look at this beauty. Huh? Isn't that insane? And it's only 11.30. And guys, before I let you go, go, I just want to talk briefly about the Gobel Power BMS, which I have tested for the last two weeks, together with our Frankenstein battery here in the off-grid garage. And I think it is fair to say that this Google Power BMS is one of the best BMSs I have ever tested here on the workbench in practice. I took these notes in the last couple of days with pros and cons for the BMS. And with the Google BMS, we have finally an electronic which resets to 100% when the battery is full without, without reaching any overprotection parameters. And from the beginning, this was one of my biggest criticism with all these industrial style BMSs, the Seplos, the Tangaluma, the Pace BMS and the Jackie battery. They all need to reach some sort of protection to actually trigger the BMS to reset to 100%. And we are not going to recharge our batteries to 3.65 volts all the time. Only very few people do this for very specific reasons, which I don't quite understand. But most of us charge our batteries only between 3.4 and 3.55 volts. And the Google Power BMS is the only and first BMS I'm testing where we can actually leave our protection parameters at 3.65 volts, but have the charge voltage for our batteries set lower. And when we reach this charge voltage, when our MPPTs are turning off, when our inverter turns off charging this battery, then we also reset the BMS to 100%. This is our 100% state of charge threshold for our battery. So for our batteries, lithium ion phosphate batteries, we usually can use these batteries between 2.5 volts and 3.65 volts. These are the specifications the manufacturer gives us and we cannot exceed these numbers without damaging our battery. And these are the same, these are the same numbers we put in our BMS as well. Because the BMS is a protection device. It protects our battery. So we should never go under 2.5 volts and we should never go over 3.65 volts. So we set our internal parameters in the BMS to these two values, which are specified by the manufacturer of your battery cell. Of course, it is not very healthy to use the battery all the way down to 2.5 and also not all the way up to 3.65 volts. So hence we tell our BMS to leave a bottom buffer of around 5%. If this 
does not work. We also have a second trigger programmed when one of our cells reaches 2.5 volts. And we also tell the BMS to only charge to 3.45 volts. But it is not up to the BMS to turn off charging at 3.45 volts. So these two numbers will be reported to your MPPT solar charge controller or to your inverter. And only these devices are responsible for charging your battery. So the BMS tells your charger what to do. Turn off at 5%, charge only to 3.45%. And they will do that. If they don't, then we have our programmed thresholds of 2.5 and, and 3.65 volts to turn off the battery and protect it. So only if your chargers are not working correctly, these figures kick in. And only the Google Power BMS resets to 100% when we reach our set charge voltage of 3.45 volt, for example. All the other BMSs, they sit on 97 or 98%. And they never go to 100% because they need to reach 3.65 volts to actually reset to 100%. And this is a fundamental design issue with all the other BMSs. It is, it is a software problem. They can fix it with a software update. But having to reach an over voltage protection value, either cell or pack, to reset to 100% is, is absolutely wrong. And the Google Power BMS does it exactly right. Also, all the settings for charge voltage limit, charge current limit, and discharge current limit can be set directly in the BMS software, and it reports them one-to-one -to, -one to the Victron system or to your inverter. And there, there's no complicated formula to find out where we have to divide the number by two and then subtract another 10 amps or 20 amps. All this is pretty bull. This totally sucks donkey balls. And here again, only the Google Power BMS so far makes it right, lets you input the numbers, and these are exact the numbers which are showing in your inverter to set all these thresholds. It is 100% plug and play with the Victron system and also with many other inverters. I mean, look at the sheer list of supported inverters. I think these are even more than the Steplos BMS supports. Like all the other BMSs in this class, the Google Power BMS comes with a current limiter as another additional safety feature. And here they're doing it right again because they are triggering this current limiter with an overcurrent alarm, not the protection. Like all the other BMSs, they need the overcurrent protection to kick in, like your 100 or 150 amps, and then the limiter comes along. While here I can use just the alarm threshold to trigger my current limiter. Far, far better to program, makes much more sense. Because again, the overcurrent protection is a protection, a safety parameter. And we should not use this to control our charging for the battery. So the Google Power BMS is not much different to any of the other BMSs we have tested in this class. From a pure hardware perspective, it has pretty much the same dimensions, it has the same form factor, and it looks very identical to the other BMSs we have already tested. So the difference here is actually in the software. And oh boy, the software is good. It lets you really fine tune, and fine adjust this BMS to your specific needs, to your battery and solar design. And at the beginning I thought, well, this is also one of my criticism points with this Google BMS because there are so many parameters affecting your charging or your protection. It is very difficult to understand how this all works together. Honestly, this is always what we wanted, right? We wanted all the parameters to set individually so we can actually tune it depending on our battery and solar design. This is exactly what we have asked for. We got it now, we got it. And this is also one of my biggest negative points with um, pretty much any of these BMSs we have tested, except the Seplos BMS, the lack of documentation. So far, only Seplos has provided us with a list where they have explained all parameters, all settings in all details. However, the translation is not the best, so sometimes it's a bit hard to understand what you actually mean with that. All these companies, they're spending ten thousands of dollars on R&D for these BMSs here, but they are not spending another five or six hundred dollars for a proper, clean, understandable 
translation from Chinese into English, which everyone can understand then. One thing all the BMSs do, uh, the Global Power BMS here is no exception there. They all turn off the charged MOSFETs when they reach 100% state of charge. And this is again something I don't quite understand because my interpretation here is the BMS is a safety device. It protects your battery, but reaching 100% state of charge is not a protection status. There's nothing we need to protect. We're reaching a set charge voltage limit and the inverter or your MPPT turns off. But why would you also disconnect the charge MOSFETs at the same time? This is a protection feature. This should only happen if we reach over current, over temperature, over voltage protection, but not when we fully charge the battery. And this is something we have never seen in any of the consumer grade uh, BMSs like the Heltec or the Overkill or the JK BMS, the Dali BMS. They only disconnect the battery either way if there is something to protect you from, but not when we fully charge the battery. But it seems like all these industrial style BMSs, they actually do that. So maybe there is a reason behind it, which I don't understand. But again, this is just a software design, which I think it is not correct. All tested BMSs can be upgraded with a firmware update, which makes these BMSs so much better than the consumer grade BMSs, Heltec, JK, Overkill. You cannot download a firmware update for them. You need to buy a new version, a new hardware. Some of the BMSs have small relays or contactors on the PCB. And usually they kick in when you have a low voltage situation and they start a generator or a charger, or they turn on a fan or a cooling system when the battery gets too warm. But here my critics are, these relays are usually hardwired in the software. They have certain functionalities, certain trigger points, and, and they cannot be changed. Well, certainly I don't need a relay to start a heating pad for my battery, for example. I would like to see a software where we can freely program these two relays. One for under voltage, turn on a charger or a generator. That's great. The other one could be used for turning on an active balancer at a certain voltage, for example. Because clearly all of these BMSs suck big donkey balls when it comes to balancing. Especially the Google Power BMS was very disappointing. This was like 30, 40, 50 milliamps only. I could hardly measure anything when it was balancing. Unfortunately, none of the tested BMSs show a DC load when connected to a Victron system. Well, what I mean is they, they, show, they show the actual DC current power, but this power is not being accumulated and added with the AC power to an overall consumption. At this point, I'm not 100% sure if this is a problem with the BMS or the Victron system. But then on the other hand, clearly the Seplos BMS does it. It does it perfectly fine, and it's the only BMS which shows the DC consumption. None of the other BMSs do it. Another critical point for the Global Power BMS is that when we are fully charging the battery, it turns actually off your solar. So once we hit the 100% state of charge, all the power from your load will be then drawn from the battery instead of your solar. And even there's still pure sunshine outside, it will take this power from the battery. This is again something in their design, which I don't understand why they are doing it. And only the Victron system itself does it actually correct. It turns off your battery once you are fully charged and then the solar power powers your load directly without using any power from the battery at all. Also, what I don't like on the Global Power BMS is no Bluetooth. Just to read some settings, I need to turn on the computer, start the software, connect to the BMS, read all the parameters, well, with all the other BMSs, I just come into the garage, start the app, and it gives me all the information with one or two clicks. I don't want to turn on this f***ing computer all the time just to read the settings. So far, only the Seplos BMS and the Tangaluma BMS in the QSO battery have Bluetooth connection. Neither the Pace BMS in the Jackie battery nor the Google Power BMS have any sort of Bluetooth communication. What the Google Power BMS does better than any other tested BMSs so far is the display. I mean, I mean, look at this display here. One click of any button turns it on and, and it gives you all the information at a glance. Voltage, amps, percentage, power. There will be symbols showing up here telling you if there's a problem with the BMS. Over voltage, over temperature, over current, under temperature. Little symbols in the display. I never went into any of these sub menus here to check anything else. There's just one click 
and you get all the information. The Cyplos VMS does a good job here as well, but in case of a fault or an alarm, it only tells you yes or no there is something, and then you have to dig deeper and actually see what's going on. Well, not so with the Global Power BMS display. Well guys, I think so far this video here about the Global Power BMS. I have already disconnected the BMS now, because now I want to test and install the BMS from our mystery box. So if you are looking for a really good BMS now, don't look any further. The Google Power BMS is really the one you want if you parallel larger batteries together. And don't get me wrong here, I still love the JK BMS as well, but it is not really designed for paralleling batteries or supplying information and data to the Victron system or to your inverter. I know it can be done, but you're adding more and more complex systems, things like more controllers, ESP32 or whatever they're called, little microcontrollers, microcomputers, which collect all the data from all the BMSs and then report them to your inverter or Victron system. I'm not sure if you get any benefit out of it. It just makes the whole system more complex and you potentially attract more problems down the line. As always, there is a link to this BMS down in the video description as well as on my website if you are interested. Oh yeah, one of the one of the um, uh, negative point is also the price for this BMS. It is the most expensive BMS as well from everything we have tested so far. Well, this is 50% more expensive than the Seplos BMS. Is it worth it? Well, I guess you have to decide this by yourself. I personally would say it is. And then also to answer your potential next question, can the Seplos BMS be replaced by the Google Power BMS? For example, in one of the Seplos boxes in the Mason, yes, you can with some modification. So none of the existing bus bars will work anymore. So there is a bit of cabling effort necessary in the Seplos box then to make this work. I mean, I have seen people taking out the Seplos BMS and replacing it with a JK BMS. And then you're ending up with all these holes in the front, so I'm not a big fan of that. And and none of the tested BMSs are really that bad that you need to replace them. Because as I've shown you, you can always add an active balancer as well to the existing BMS, and then the battery works perfectly fine. But if you are in the market of building your own battery right now and looking for a good quality BMS, which also supports paralleling, I can only recommend the Google Power BMS at the moment because the software does exactly what we always wanted. Okay guys, as always, thank you so much for watching. Thanks for all your great support. Thanks for all these beautiful people out there who have donated so I can calibrate a spat here and there in sunny hot Australia. Thank you very much for your financial support as well as for all your other support, leaving comments, likes, sharing. This is all very much appreciated and it keeps the channel alive. Until the next video guys, when we install the new mystery BMS on the Frankenstein battery. You stay charged, stay safe and thanks again for watching. See you then. Bye bye Google Power BMS. For now, for now. Hey, hey, wait, wait, wait. Before you go, go. I want to show you the box here with the um, BMSs I have ordered. Three of them are in this box. And I cannot show you what's in there. Otherwise you would know what's going on. But what I can show you is, this is the Google Power BMS here. And this is the box of the new BMS we want to install in the next video. What do you think it is? It is not the Batrium BMS. It is not a REC BMS. And it is not an Orion BMS.